Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Pit Selection Show. I'm Jonathan Merriman, joined now by my buddy Dion Rocco Williams. Rocco, the surface at Atlanta. It's uh, it's got more experience than your 17 year Cup Pit Crew career. This is an old place. This wears out tires. And you were telling me before the show the crews are going to get a workout this weekend with so many pit stops uh, on this old worn out surface. You're right, Jonathan. Third Otis track on the circuit. This track will eat up tires. There'll be a lot of pit stops, 13 set of tires. It's going to be a busy day for these crews. I'm telling you what, Atlanta will be the first track to expose all weak pit crews on pit road. Not only that, you will have to manage those tires as well as your strategy. You won't be able to come down every single time like you might want to because you won't have tires at the end of those stages, as well as every single car that finished in the top five last week had to open in or out for themselves during that race. So therefore that will be important in these selections as well. I'm curious to see how they pick, where they pick, and if those uh, open in and out will be um, top priority. All right, now let's go to Kip Childress and see where our Bush pole winner, Denny Hamlin, decides to pit this weekend in Atlanta. All right, we'll jump right in. Car number 11. Take uh, stole three. 11 takes three. Car 19. Uh, we'll take eight, please. All right. 19 takes eight. 22. 13, please, Kit. All right. 22 is in 13. Number two. Uh, 43, please, Kit. Two is in 43. Number nine. 23, please. Nine takes 23. Number five. Hey, Kip, five will take 21, please. All right, five and 21. Number four. 34, please. Four takes 34. 20. Take 20, Kip. All right, 20 takes 20. 24. Well, uh, 24 will take six, please. Okay, 24 takes six. Number 12. 12 will take 11. Okay, 12's and 11. Number one. Four, please, sir. Okay, one four, takes four. four. 47. We'll take 35, Kip. 47 four, takes 35. All right, number three. Take 33, Kip. Three takes 33. 48. Hey, Kip, the 48 is going to take stall 41. All right, 48 is in 41. 23. Uh, 23 will take 31. All right, 23 and 31. Number 10. Uh, 39, Kip. 10 takes 39. 17. Takes stall 22. Okay, 17 is in 22. 34. Nine. Is in nine. 18. 18 will take 29. Okay, 18 and 29. 21. 37. 21 is in 37. All right, Rocco, it was business as usual for the pole sitter. Uh, Bush pole winner Denny Hamlin gets that first pit box. Where it gets a little interesting is about 10 or 11 picks back. Kurt Bush picking behind the 11 in the number two stall. And then you have Ricky Stenhouse Jr. picking behind Kevin Harvick. Both of those guys give up a clean in or an out on pit road. Why is that? Well, there's a couple of reasons that might be. One, you're chasing guys that are running well in the race. You know, Kevin Harvick typically runs well there in Atlanta. You might want to pit around guys that are, going, or that are going to run well, as well as avoid the melee that will be in the middle of pit road. At the same time, cars do not get lapped often here in Atlanta. The speeds are very high. Cars stay on elite laps. So when cautions come out, there are a lot of cars on pit road, which means it's very busy on pit road. And you don't want to be around cars trying to get in and out and off of pit road. It's understandable why Kurt Busch picked behind Denny Hamlin and why Ricky Stenhouse picked behind Kevin Harvick, because they do not want to be around all that chaos, which will be in the middle of pit road. 
All right, now we're going to figure out who's going to end up in that chaos in the middle of pit road as we go back to Kip and we find out who is going to fill out all the spots on pit road at Atlanta. 42. We'll take stall 25, please. All right, 42 is in 25. 43. 27, please. 43 is in 27. 37. Uh, 42. 37 takes 42. 14. Take 14, please. All right, 14 is in 14. 99. Take up we'll take a 16. All right, 99 is in 16. 77. 24, please, Kip. All right, 77 and 24. 41. 18, please, Kip. All right, 41 is an 18. Number six. Take uh, 15, please. Six takes 15. Number eight. Take 30, Kip. All right, eight takes 30. Number seven. That's all five. Seven is in five. Seventy-eight. Uh, thirty-two, Kip. All right, seventy-eight and thirty-two. Thirty-eight. I'll take forty. Thirty-eight takes forty. Fifty-one. Thirty-six. Is in thirty-six. 15. Uh, put me in 38. All right. 15 and 38. Double zero. I'll go in 26. All right. Double zero and 26. 53. Uh, I'll take 19. Is in 19. 52. 28. Right. 52 oh, is in 28. So 66 will take pit stall 17, and that puts the 33 and 10. All right, Rocco, now that pit road is completely filled out, I can't help but go back to that four car, you know, defending winner of this race. If we go back, he's got a lot of wins here. He always seems to pick down towards the back of pit road when he has the opportunity to pick towards the front. Why is that, and how does that assist Kevin Harvick in racking up so many wins here? Whether it's uh, just a lucky feel that he has or if he just wants to repeat that feeling, we do not know specifically, but we do know he manages that traffic very well at that end of pit road, which is why if it's not broke, why fix it? So the simple fact that it's been working for him for a long time at Atlanta Motor Speedway where he likes the tail end of pit road to uh, maneuver his race. So at the end of the day, Kevin Harvick is our biggest winner for the simple fact that he had the ability to pick where he likes to pick and where he has had so much success previously. All right, little winners and losers time. But before we get into that, last week, I wasn't on the show, but, you know, I watch, I listen to what you tell me. Uh, so you said the 23 last week at Phoenix was going to have some problems on pit road. Uh, you proved everybody right. Tell us what you heard over the radio at Phoenix, and who do you see at Atlanta that might have some similar issues? Well, I say that because – Depending on where you run the week before, it's showing how important that is becoming because it mandates where you pick your pit stalls. 23 did not run very strong the weeks before uh, Phoenix last week. Therefore, he had a late pit stall selection. He was sandwiched in between two cars last week, I believe, the three and the 41. And he had a rough day to the point where I believe that might have mitigated some of their decision making as it evolved coming in or staying out. So if you don't think pit stall selection is important, you might want to ask Bubba about that at the same time. That eight car looks like he might be in that same position this week. He is sandwiching between the 23 and the 18 all day. And if he does not get in front of those cars, he will be in a similar position that Bubba was in that 23 car at Phoenix last week, and it will make their day extremely hard. All right, Rocco, it's now time for winners and losers. You've convinced me once again that my winner is going to be Kevin Harvick. You said he's got a feel for the back end of Pitt Road. I'm going to go with that. Loser, I'm going to pick two. The eight, you convinced me of that as well. 
and the 14 of Chase Briscoe pitting around a lot of cars that are going to be on that lead lap. If they want to contend, they're going to be the meat in the sandwich. What are, what are your thoughts? My thoughts is I'm looking at that number two of Brad Keselowski. He picked the last pit box. He's alone on an island out there, avoiding all of that, that, that traffic, all that chaos that's going on pit road. He can do his pit stop. He can get out to that grass and just coast all the way down to the end of pit road. We'll see if that works out for him. My losers is a, is a plethora. It's a group by committee because they ran so poor. They'll have bad picks. They've had bad uh, first few, uh, few races. It is Matt Benedetto, Bowman, Chastain, and Bush, and where they picked – I need those guys to have very good racists. I need them to avoid all drama on pit road. They just need to have a clean, solid day so they can start rebounding their season. All righty. What are your final thoughts as we head into Atlanta? One of my final, final thoughts is this is going to be a big race for these crews. Like I said, the weaker crews will be exposed at this mile and a half track. It's our third oldest track, and it's going to expose a lot of crews that need to tighten it up. It's time to go. And these crews know that. All right. You haven't lied to me yet. I'm going to use all this information, even in my fantasy lineup. And uh, you guys can see if Rocco is right. Well, let's say we can show you Rocco is right Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern time on Fox from Atlanta.